Good afternoon, Mikel. Hello. Big, big game Sunday. Can we just start off with team news? Any chance Gabriel, Martinelli, Gabriel and Bukayo Saka will feature? Yeah, there is a chance they haven't trained, but uh, tomorrow we have another session, so there is a chance that um, they can be available. It was eight wins in a row before the international break. Did it come at a bad time, and has it been a challenge to try and almost reignite that momentum? Well, you cannot do it. Uh, that moment uh, is gone. They had to go to the national teams. We have maximized as much as we possibly could. The time we had here with certain players, and, um, and now everybody's back. Everybody's so positive about um, what is coming and looking forward to it. You had seven Premier League meetings as Arsenal manager against Pep's Manchester City. The first six were defeats, but you managed to get that win this season. Could you just put into words what belief that's given you? and the belief and mentality it's given your players? Yeah, we had some clashes as well in the in the FA Cup, in Community Shields. Um, and it's all great experiences. Um, they have raised the bar in this league, I think in football in general, to a level that it haven't been seen before. And that's the beauty of a sport, that that makes you better, <laughs> that challenges you more. And, uh, and you have to keep up uh, with that pace. And uh, that's what we are trying to do. When you go back, to last season, I know people always ask you to compare what's happened this season compared to last season, but does it feel different for you and does the belief feel different compared to last season? Yeah, it is different, the uh, momentum was different, uh, we have certain results and, and some big injuries as well in that moment and uh, and that's it, but those experiences are there to, um, to learn, sometimes you just have to clap the opponent when they are better than you and that was the case on the day as well and learn from it and challenge yourself to be better. We know about your, your friendship, your, your mutual respect with Pep Guardiola. How often do you speak now and has your relationship changed? Well, it had to change. It has to change. My admiration and what I feel for him, certainly not. My opinion is the best coach in the world by a mile. And, um, and he's one of the nicest persons I have met in football and certainly one of the ones that I have had more fun and laugh working with and that's going to stay there forever but obviously our roles at the moment are where they are and um, and you have to adapt to the situation because i'm guessing there's certain topics you just can't broach anymore for sure not but uh, it's it's what it is but uh, that happens the same in relationship with players you know when i have some teammates here and and then you become the coach and that relationship has to be adapted you cannot feel different about the person but uh, professionally you have to act differently Mika, I must ask you about Ben White. He, he made himself unavailable for England. Um, just how is he? He received a lot of criticism. And what, what did you make of that criticism he received? And have you had to speak to I him? I think he has received a lot of love. And you just have to see what his teammates and what everybody um, in football thinks of him, the one that they've been close. And um, I think people have respected uh, his decision. And, and hopefully one day he's prepared to to represent his country in the best possible way, but that's completely up to him. Just finally on that, just there's been a, a few debates about why he actually made himself unavailable. Can you can you clarify no, why? That's that's a question, and uh, and um, and he's the one who has to reply. Worth a try. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Michael. Hi. Um, nearly a year since you faced Manchester City in April last season. You were in a title race then. But with that distance from that game, what was the biggest lesson you took from it? The level that we are facing uh, and, and where we want to be. Certainly that's where we want to be. And, uh, and you have to make um, strong steps to get there. And I think we have done some big ones in the last two or three years. And we're getting much, much closer. And now it's how you close that gap and actually try to be better than them. Previously, you spoke about the levels that Manchester City have raised to football, not only in the league, but in the world. They've suffered five defeats this season across all competitions, of which two have been against Arsenal. So how, how proud does that make you feel to see that your team has inflicted defeats on mm. one of the teams that you've said is the best in the world? Well, that's great, but that's the competition and, and the same with Liverpool. And, uh, and they have earned the right, you know, for everybody to look at them as an example because what they've done has been phenomenal to do it in this league and to do it consistently like they have done. And, um, and I think that has raised our level as well and our demands um, to try to be like them um, and beat them. You mentioned that the players coming back from the international break have been excited, have been a positive yeah. vibe. 
um, for fans and neutrals, it's a very exciting time seeing Arsenal in another title race. Mm. Could you just put us in your shoes? What is it like being in this position again, going into these final nine games, and it's so tight between yourselves, Man City, and mm. Liverpool? Yeah, I was I was just watching everybody um, walk in the building, and and I love the energy. I love the smiles. They were glad to be back. Um, they were actually wanted to train yesterday, and the way they communicate and, and relate with each other is is phenomenal. And we have to embrace the moment. We need to go day by day, train really well, prepare for every match, and and see where this can take us. We've done a lot already to to be in the position that we are, and uh, and now we have to embrace and enjoy the moment and and go for it. And just finally, is this the most confident you felt taking an Arsenal side? to the Etihad since becoming the Arsenal manager? I have full belief and trust in in my players and, and what we are trying to do. But um, it's something that we have to show on the pitch outside. It's very easy to talk. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you very much. I'm Gareth. Hi. Just have a quick one on, on Ben, if that's OK. Were you surprised that Gareth spoke so publicly about a conversation that was actually a private matter? I don't know. That's something between them. I don't know what the arrangements um, were they and what they have agreed. That's completely up to them. And just again, go back to Pep. I know you, you talked about how close you are. Does that make it even more special for you that you're fighting for, for titles and potentially Champions League semi-finals against someone not only who you respect professionally but you're Probably I would prefer to do it against somebody else that I don't have those feelings. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's not a choice and, uh, and it's what it is and... Um, and that's it. We both want to win. Uh, we know each other very well, and um, and we'll prepare the game to win it. Sorry. No, he didn't. No. <laughs> and then just finally, as well as Sunday, as well as your game on Sunday, it's a big game for, for the women's yeah. team as well. So it could be a big and hopefully for you guys, successful weekend for the club. Yes, it's a big, big weekend for the club. Um, wish them all the best for the final. I think what they're doing is. Incredible, and uh, I heard that they're going to get a lot of support as well. So that's great news. So, um, yeah, let's go for it. Thank you. Sorry. Just on Pep, Mikel, you talk about being the best coach in the world. Is his ability to innovate, which makes him that, you know, I think the game last season, playing long balls up to Haaland, which you don't see Man City do, John Stones this season, we've seen sort of marauding forward and centre-back. Is that what makes him the best, the way he's sort of innovating? Yeah, one is it, and then because I know that and the passion that um, that he leaves the game, uh, the intelligence that way he handles um, the team as well and the club and how demanding he is, and 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 then he has an incredible work ethic, and that's something that uh, people doesn't see, but uh, there's a lot of work um, behind the scene, and um, and he's managed to do it for three different clubs at the top elite level. Every single season, you know, and uh, and that's a huge quality. Just as a last one on Ben, is it is it your hope that he does get to play for England again? Is that something you'd like to see? As manager, I want the best for him, personal and professionally, and um, he really needs to feel it. And if one day he does, and and that's the case, yeah, I think that would be the best option for everybody. But you have to respect that. Cool. Let's look ahead now, Kaya, please. Hi, Michael. Hi. This is the first of quite a tough run of away fixtures to end the season, but your side are top as for Premier League when it comes to away form this season. I just wondered what the sort of the, the secret is behind that form and how you've been able to get such a good away record this season. The secret, I don't know, is we probably try to play um, away like uh, we try to play at home and, and have that belief and, and that aggression in our play. Um, and yeah, you have to play like, every team twice and, uh, and we know the fixtures that we have, but uh, we are looking forward to it. It was such a it was such a thing before you came that Arsenal were struggling away from home. Mm. And obviously, you've been able to transform it. I've just won, I'm just wondering how you have gone about doing that in terms of convincing the players that they're able to go and do it when maybe before they, they didn't have that belief. Yeah, but I think that belief comes as well by by winning, you know, and and you start to win in one ground that you haven't won for many years, and it, you do it somewhere else, and that belief it um, it takes some momentum, and and now they approach away games very similar to home games. You cannot replicate it, but at least mentally, and um, and the purpose that they play with is, is very similar. And that momentum that you've got, you mentioned there, does that put you now in a better place to beat Man City than maybe in, in years gone by? Well, let's hope so. And um, it is different, actually, that um, the previous game, what we did before we went there and, and this season, and, um, and now we have to prove that um, on the pitch. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Obviously a big occasion on Sunday. Um, 
do you think it will affect the quality of the game at all that it's coming straight after this international break? It's a great question. I don't know. Hopefully, from our side, no, <laughs> and uh, we can maintain what we've been doing and um, and we're at our best. Because there's obviously been a lot of withdrawals across Europe. I mean, do, do you think the March international break needs looking at in terms of where it comes in the season? Yeah, I think the, in general the whole calendar year has to be looking at because we are in a lot of games, um, but that's a topic obviously that uh, we all know and it doesn't look like we're going to affect it in, in the right way, but um, yeah, you've seen a lot of games, a lot of players um, with different circumstances throughout this, um, this international period. Yeah, I mean there's always a lot of talk about players pulling out or deals struck between clubs and countries over availability. Can, can you give us an, a bit of an insight into just how much manoeuvring there is with this March break between mm. the clubs and the country? Yeah, we try to have the best possible communication um, with the national teams, but um, at the end, you know, um, they have the capacity and um, to select the players and use them how they feel. Um, I always feel that they want to protect the players as well, but it's true that they have their own pressure, they have to deliver in their roles, and um, I will never get into into their position and to tell them, you can give your opinion and, and explain in the most open way how players are feeling and what we recommend, but then it's entirely up to them. Uh, and just obviously you had this big lead this time last year, weren't able to see it out. You, you talked before about the need to keep players fit this time being a key part of, of, of avoiding that. But when, when you've done your analysis into the back end of last season, can you give us a bit more insight into what you noticed, and what, what you think went wrong and, and what you're looking to avoid or improve on this time in this final 10 games? Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of detail going on. There are moments, there are specific moments. You are an Anfield, you are Tunnel. Um, you have the moment to, to to go and win the game. You don't. You end up drawing, and you are West Ham. You are in the same position. You can still win it. You miss the penalty, and it's two games. And then the third one comes in with Bournemouth, where we should have clearly won the game. And there were many factors that didn't allow us. Uh, we got the injuries. It was the sporting game. It was a lot happening there, and that momentum was shifted to a, a more negative momentum, and and then we struggled to keep up because they kept winning. They won 14, 15 games in a row, and. <laughs> And they managed to do it. And obviously, because the games you mentioned there, by the time you then went to the Etihad, ah. it was kind of coming going away from you a bit. Mm -hmm. it? So, in in that context, how important is Sunday? Yeah, yeah it's a massive game uh, for both teams, and that's for sure because um, it will give us a huge boost again uh, if we go there and win it. But still, there is a long, long, long way after to to make all the ground to to win it. Last one on live, Hannah. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Uh, just wanted to ask about Kai Havertz. He's an incredible made of form, both on international level. He scored four in his last four, I think, in the Premier League. How important is he for this weekend? And will you need to set him up top for wherever he is on the field? Yeah, he's been in, in great form, as you said. Um, his overall performance, I think, they've been really complete, both for his country and, and us. And then he's got a scoring threat, obviously. So uh, it's a player. He's been playing different positions, fulfilling those roles in in a great way. And we will see how we use him uh, for this game. Brilliant. Ten thirty, last third.